Andre, welcome to the Daily Jewels. Thank you so much for taking some time out to join us. Uh, no, thanks for inviting me. This is uh, this is what uh, makes your makes the week for you know people like me. I get to you know actually correspond and converse face to face, you know, via Zoom, but uh, also get to speak with people, you know, especially we we only know each other on Twitter sometimes. So you know, it's uh, it, it's fun to uh, actually connect. Uh, in if it's not face to face, it's sort of face to face. So this is awesome. Yeah, Thanks for zoom, having me. Zoom to Zoom, digital face. <laughs> zoom, to, digital yeah, Zoom face. face to Zoom face. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, we we've got quite a big challenge ahead of us. You know, we've got a, quite a big question to answer today, which is, is Jaws a monster movie? And and honestly, we couldn't think of anyone better to ask that question of than the leader of the Monster Squad himself. When uh, when we talk about Jaws from a genre point of view. People talk about it as an action adventure, as a drama, as a thriller and, and a horror movie. But because it's got this beast of an animal or creature in it, it sometimes falls into the monster movie category by accident. Um, but before we get directly into the question, I want, I want to understand from the leader of the monster squad, in your mind, what defines a great monster movie? I think what, if I had to be put on the spot to say what is, what defines a great monster movie, I think you, it's tough because it can go parallel. You can have a great monster movie that contradicts what, what I would initially say. So what I would initially say is you have to have a monster that one has a reason for being there, mm -hmm. um, is brutal, doesn't care. You, you may relate, to, you may you can't really feel a lot of sympathy for the monster, but sometimes in monster, they make you feel sympathy. You're like, Oh, I don't really, but they've got to, they got to get rid of this monster because he'll kill mm -hmm. everybody. Um, and, and that's kind of everybody's, you know, or my initial kind of response, but sometimes the monster does not in a monster movie does not have to have, there's no remorse. You don't have to relate to them. You have to, you know, hate them because you know, you're, you're rooting for the characters. The problem is in some movies, you're rooting for the monster because you hate the characters so much. You're like, yeah, actually, I don't want them to kill them. I want all these people to go. Um, uh, and so it, it's almost a pair, it almost contradicts each other. But I, I think if you had to, to blend it in, it's a good monster is uh, in an imposing, overwhelming force that may or may not have a very small vulnerability that the only way you're going to do that is one, figure that out, the vulnerability and two, succeed in exploiting that. Yeah. Um, and what makes a great, because your question was meant to rate monster movie or a great monster. Monster movie, but we can talk about well, monsters as well. Cause that, that we, yeah, that's so something good. I know I'm glad cause I had a second half to my idiocy that I was spewing here. Um, <laughs> So with, with the monster, with that is, and you also have to, one, believe the situation, even if it's fantastical. It's got to be set in some sort of, oh, I, I can, I, I feel like this could happen. Like it, it, this could, even if it's, you know, kind of supernatural or fantastical mm -hmm. and you have to like the characters. We've said this, you know, 10 times already. You have to like the characters in a monster movie to have a good monster movie because if you don't, you're rooting for the monster, like I mentioned before, and the whole thing falls apart. And then when, you know, the doofuses defeat the monster, you're not satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's so true. And yeah. so I, I think it's really about the characters and the monster is one of the characters. Yeah. And it's, it's funny you say that because we did a Twitter poll um, a few days ago once we knew that we were going to be speaking to you. And we asked the question, uh, do oh. you class the shark from Jaws as a movie monster? And um, 
I was really surprised by the response. Now, uh, the, when we asked that particular question, 61% of people said yes, which I found really surprising. I thought it might be the other way. And 38% <sighs> sort of said no. But then mm-hmm. when you dig into the comments, there's some really interesting perspectives because what you just said there about the the monster having some sort of not just being a force of nature or, or an obstacle to overcome but having a almost like a character of its own um it, it's i'll read a couple of the comments and, and we'll, we'll see what we think so for example um david west so at dw underscore 1976 he said absolutely bruce is a classic movie monster i've always considered him a horror movie character rather than a true life great white shark this shark's got personality and coming back to your point i think you said earlier in the interview that you don't really see the shark that much so you're creating a lot of this in your mind already um so i think what you're saying about the monsters having personality i think that's a really key point because it makes that it raises the stakes of the battle and it makes it a little bit more personal rather than this just generic monster versus generic heroes. It's it's about that almost interpersonal connection. Do you know what, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? It, absolutely. And I think that's the core of, you know, if, if they can build or create a monster, not physically, but in the story, um, that is a character in the movie, not just a thing. Mm. Uh, but I think what they do in Jaws very well is, uh, and his name is Dave, his name is David, right? That might shore up David's, you know, kind of comment. Is it David? Uh, yeah, David West. Yeah, David West's comment is, even though we don't see, you know, Jaws the the the, the movie shark a lot, uh, mm-hmm. that adds to the suspense and 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 the thrill for us as viewers. But in the context of the film and in the story and the dialogue, they're building the character of a shark and sharks in general but also and then later on this particular shark because mm-hmm. once quint goes just he just he turns another one's like i'm gonna th- th- now this is a mission like i'm i hate this thing uh and i don't care what happens like i'll destroy all of you and my boat and myself i don't care but this thing's gotta go because he has this backstory with sharks so sharks in general start getting characterize as mm. he sees them as only through his personal experience as these devilish demonic creatures that know nothing they have small brains and they have all oh, eyes like a doll's eyes you know and you know they do nothing because he went through a horrific experience which is probably mm. if you could add up all the horrific experience that humans have actually been through on this planet, that's probably at the top of the list of, you know, for, you know, the guys of the Indianapolis being picked off by sharks left and right. That is absolutely terrifying. Why? Because the crew of the Indianapolis couldn't see the monster coming and then it was too late. Yeah. And you almost never saw it. It was just there and you were gone. Mm -hmm. And then that's what also ties in with the mechanical failure. So it makes the story even better that we don't see the shark, but the character of the shark from Hooper's point of view is a fascination. Yeah. And, and knowledge and learning is like, look, this thing is just out. This is just doing, I think one of his lines, he just, he's just doing what he does. Mm. He is, a, he's a consumer of calories. <laughs> you know, that's really all a great white <laughs> shark is. Right. And that would have been a great line. I don't think it is, but when we redo yeah. our Jaws movie, we'll have that. He's just a consume. Zach Efron's going to say he's a consumer of calories. <laughs> And see how I'm setting everything up for you? It's good. I love it. This is great. Uh, I'm making notes of this, by the way. <laughs> Calling Zach Efron. Um, <laughs> and that's all that shark is doing. He's just mm. ended up, you know, we're on the East Coast where you don't, you know, at this time you didn't see a lot of great white sharks, you know, very few sightings. You saw some Makos and some Threshers and some other stuff. You get all the, you know, the Quint backstory of the shark lore of, of Amity. But, you know, for some reason, this giant beast is so strong that he's come up, you know, the, you know, the, the Gulf water, the Gulf stream out of the warm waters on the East coast and ended up as far up as someone that he could go only because he's a super predator. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, he's so capable and strong 
that he is in literally uncharted waters for sharks, right? He's like, I can survive up here. Yeah, it's colder, it's wood, but hey, there's a whole new food source for me. And look at all these, <laughs> look at all these people flying around in the water. It's great. Um, and then, you know, Brody is, he doesn't give a shit about sharks. He's like, close the beach, tell everybody to go home. This is dumb. Like, what is happening here? Why are we here? This is dumb. Just let the thing go. Because uh, he doesn't want to be there. Uh, so so we, we have characterized him. I don't want to be personified, but we've created this, you know, kind of thing of that we're perceiving the shark as from two different kind of character views. And it mm. absolutely, from, from Quint's point of view, is a monster. Yeah. Because the monster almost killed him before, killed a bunch of his friends, uh, horrific experience. Mm. Uh, from Hooper's, it's it, it, it's a monster, but of fascination. Like I gotta study this monster. Like I just I don't want to. Like I gotta. The worst thing that happened to Hooper in this movie is that the shark blew up, so he couldn't like take it home and and like have it as like a pet. Yeah, he seemed pretty like, relieved when it got blown up and after it attacked him in the thing. But yeah, I think he would have liked to have taken it home and studied it. Oh, or, he, absolutely, because you know, that's that scientific wall or mind. Right. That's right. Yeah. He's like, this is, I was part of this, but then once everything went to hell in a handbasket, then I'm glad it got blown up. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he took some keep, like, but they didn't even take any keepsakes. He's like, as a scientist would have taken flesh and body parts and some teeth and whatever they just got on the pontoons and started swimming back they're like screw yeah. this like <laughs> <laughs> i'll write it up in a journal maybe or i may I, never I think, speak of this again <laughs> i think to be fair brody had had enough at that point it's like okay i've done my bit i'm out let's just let's just go home please I've, i need to go home and have a drink Do you know what I mean? uh, um, the, but yeah it's it, so i think I, I he's he's absolutely a movie monster I'm going to say yes. Mm. Um, and he's almost one of those almost literal classic monsters, even though Jaws was a book before. It's not what I'm, I'm, I'm tying to. I'm tying to like the literary classics of maybe a Frankenstein's monster or a mm. Dracula, uh, because those monsters are something else that has per is perceived different from the people that are experiencing their time with them, but mm. based off of we have millions of years of shark history but these three these two guys or th these three guys only experience you know a day or two of experience over millions of years of evolution of, the, of these shark stories with this one shark who does this shark speak for all sharks is this shark a singular thing like i think the shark is a one-off like he is a super beast he is different maybe there's more out there that's why we got sequels <laughs> but you know well we got the uh, mic that's right. We got the Meg. We got Jaws three and three D. Now they're coming at you. Um, but yeah, I'll go with that Jaws. You know, and and is Jaws the character? Like, is the name? I'm sure this question has been asked. It was like the movie's called Jaws, mm -hmm. but is the name of the shark in the movie Jaws, or is it just about sharks' mouths and it, like this this, 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 this you know, thing? Is like it's not. In it's the script, really I guarantee point. you, it doesn't. In the script direction, it doesn't say. And Jaws swims from left to right uh, as nope. he's dragging the barrel. It doesn't no, say Jaws in the script. It's, it, it says the shark. Just the shark. Yeah. Um, there was it, a couple more comments um, yes. that I'd, I'd love to share with you because a couple of them Absolutely. I thought oh, this this is interesting. So this is from this is a great name, uh, Jim Bob Squarepants. So at Vantage GT, and he says. No, I'm a huge fan of monster movies, King Kong, Wolfman, Frankenstein, Dracula. So you're absolute neck of the woods. Um, but they're not real. A huge great white shark is uh, entirely feasible. I don't consider Jaws a horror film either. Now, I find that very interesting because the thing is where I think sort of Jim Bob sort of potentially contradicts himself at some point is where he says King Kong. Because King Kong is an overgrown ape, right? Right. The shark slash Jaws slash Bruce is an overgrown shark. Shark. So what's the difference between the two? But I get what he's saying about him not being a monster in the same way as Frankenstein's monster or Dracula and things like that. So I think, because in my mind, I don't really see Jaws necessarily as a monster movie. It's sort of an amalgamation of different genres and you could potentially say yeah there's an there's an aspect of monster movie 
in Jaws. I don't know. That's that 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 comment when I saw that, I thought, hmm, that's definitely one. For yeah, Andre. I don't. I I think I agree with him on that. It's not a monster movie, mm. but the shark is a monster as a character because he's mm. a monstrous character. Yeah, uh, I'm bl- blending sort of the last you know last two conversations. Uh, I think the movie and the story is a um, adventure story and survival story of three guys. Mm. Uh, and in so of that horrific story, you know, they, you know, save a small beach town, you know, you know, they, they save the day. Um, yeah. But, but no one will end up knowing it, <laughs> right? Because they weren't out there on the boat. Only we know that as the viewing audience. Exactly. Uh, and they probably go back and we'll never talk about it ever. Like it's <laughs> such a harrowing, like they're never going to, you know, talk about their exploits. Yeah. Um, yeah. But where, you know, he, yeah, King Kong is an ape, uh, but, you know, he makes a good point, but also my guy, like Godzilla is just a big salamander. Like he's just a big lizard. He's yeah. a big amphibious lizard, you know, frog guy that got irradiated. Uh, but Godzilla, like Frankenstein's monster, they're parallel because they didn't ask to be who they are. Yeah. They, they didn't, they weren't molded. They weren't baked. They weren't conjured up by the devil. You know, they weren't made by some alien, you know, supernatural force to be this kind of killer of humans. Mm. Um, I never, like, I grew up watching Godzilla movies. They were very confusing to me. (laughs) And I was like, why is Godzilla a monster? Like, why are you shooting your tanks and guns at him when he comes out of the sea? Yeah, he rampages and destroys your town, but he also ends up saving you all from the other kaiju that had come around like why are you shooting at Godzilla? like it was confusing yeah. to me as a kid and i was like he's not a month he didn't ask to be that guy if we go to the street he got irradiated as this you know frog fish thing and just he's just a giant thing like king kong didn't ask to be who what like he's the only and he can't relate to anybody he's the only yeah. one of his kind yeah. uh jaws or the shark or bruce um he is a giant shark uh, but he did he did he go to the gym and work like he's just this freak of nature mm. that is so I think the thing that's scary I think almost if you get really super deep into analyzing the evilness of the shark uh, you know with you know small brain dead eyes you know, the eyes it's a great line um, <laughs> and he just knows one thing yeah I think if you look like we we really should look at and have fun with the conversation that the shark of being just such this predator of this thing that knows one thing, it's got to keep moving forward or it dies. It's got to consume all these calories just because it's so big, you know, Mm. to keep going to survive. There's a handful of humans that are like that too, that are evil, that are monsters, Um, you know, serial killers, dictators, you know, think, you know, that just evil people that brains work differently. Mm. and they they only do one thing they have no remorse they don't care i, I think you know we can sort of parallel i don't want to get too artsy fartsy <laughs> or, or or neurological or psychological you know with with the shark and other humans but what's the difference yeah you know it's... and we would easily call some of these humans monsters but and they didn't necessarily ask to be who they are but they reinforce it and they just keep bigger and bigger and bigger and, bigger and they just they feed that they feed that bloodlust all the shark is doing is feeding his calorie intake and just happens to be blood involved he didn't care about blood blood's nothing to him blood's mustard like to him blood's like mustard to you and me on a sandwich um yeah. and you know and then if he wants dijon he just goes across the pond and goes to france and gets french blood <laughs> You know, so it's, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the movie. It's like that's he why he went Dijon. to the Bahamas in Jaws Four. He fancied a bit of Caribbean Bahama flavor. He's like, look, I like mustard. the jerk chicken spice. I like the I like the jerk that's spices it. down here. It's good. Yeah, it's about it's about spice. Um, and we got different people here with different blood. It's, what's the difference? Uh, so I, think- I, I mean, I understand his argument. I, I I think Jaws the character is. I don't think. Jaws, the movie is a horror movie. I think it's an adventure survival tale mm-hmm. of the human condition uh, that has elements of horror because it's psychologically terrifying in some parts. Yeah. And I think just to pick up on your point around, you know, 
the real monsters not actually being the monsters as such or, or the monsters maybe being people um when particularly since covid's happened um the mayor from jaws is always obviously seen as the villain because he's the one that's trying to keep the yeah. beaches open yes. automatic kind of this year. Yeah. oh it's been fantastic honestly it's been a great <laughs> year um for, for jaws memes anyway um right. but straight away you refer back to obviously our pm boris johnson straight away and your former president donald trump you know those two leaders were automatically compared with mayor vaughan so often it was crazy oh, and, sure. and when you yeah. when you look at a movie like you know jaws i'm not quite sure if it's quite as complicated with the monster squad I, nothing comes to mind but the monster in the monster movie isn't always actually the monster do you know what I mean? It's not what we think is the monster or the front of house. No it's actually the people behind it. You know what I mean? That, that right. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think. Yeah. Who's just, the, like you said, who's the monster in, because there's some interesting conversation about a Dracula character. Like Duncan has a great thing of how he brought the character to life of, yeah, he's this evil guy and he has this mm -hmm. plan, but he used to be a man. Yeah. And he didn't necessarily ask to become a vampire. So he's had to yeah. live this sh sucky life, pun intended, you know, for hundreds of years. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it, but that's the only way. Now he's just, I think he's, now he's just pissed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now he's just, a, so you he know, he's just like. And um, the same thing with Godzilla. Is Godzilla the monster? Or are we the monster because we created the technology that birthed Godzilla? Mm. Like who, this who's is the thing. The, I... Who are the monsters in this world? No, and uh, you know what, I think, because there was uh, the, the last comment I'll read from the Twitter, which I think is probably the one that I would, I probably agree with the most, is this was from uh, Michael Lee Grant, so at uh, Kaiju Mike, I think I pronounced that right. Um, he, said, he said that um, it stops being a shark and becomes a monster as the movie progresses. I would agree with that because first obviously you you, you think okay well this is just a, a shark it's a it's a, a menace it's a problem that needs to be dealt with but as the movie goes on and as the shark becomes more and more aggressive and violent and ultimately you know sinks a boat and with you know with a vengeance it's like okay yeah. now we're getting into movie monster sort of territory um so i think me personally i think that that sort of comment sums it up nicely because it becomes something else as the movie goes on as the characters do as well you know you see the characters change particularly particularly brody um okay yeah, so I think it's a great i think it's a great comment because yeah. that reinforces what we were talking about earlier that the shark is a character and he has a character mm. arc Absolutely. like at first he, he's just swimming around doing what he does i'm swimming around looking like oh there's some food i don't know if human seal you know bonito doesn't matter to him <laughs> it doesn't matter we're yeah. just putting our own, you know, we put our own wash on it that this thing is evil because he just ate a kid. He's like, I don't know what a kid is. Yeah, that's very true. The shark doesn't know what a kid is. The, the shark goes, oh, that's an appetizer. Like, I'm hungry. Yeah. It's and the it, same I, thing. Like, it, it's, I don't know why, because this goes back to me, you know, I have issues, you know, <laughs> I have issues, but, you know, issues that I've always had since I was a younger kid and I, and I learned, you know, really got into the natural world and, 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 I'm not an environmentalist, but I'm a, I, I, I would certainly probably call myself a, 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 con, a conservationist and a wannabe environmentalist. Um, but I, in the grand scheme of it, we are, we've done such a disservice to our home rock by thinking we are not just one of the other animals on this planet. Yes, we mm. can reason and build buildings and make cars and fly airplanes, but we, we, we are no on the base level of it we are we serve no other purpose than all the other animals we're the same thing and so with the shark is like he's like i don't i don't know what a human is yeah i just see something that i should eat because that's what i do yeah and the mere fact that we're taken aback going, oh my god the shark is evil because you just ate the uh the oh what's the kid's name the kid alex Kidman, uh, yeah yeah the kittener boy the kittener boy um that's horror this thing's a monster is it yeah, exactly or are we wrong for thinking that we're different than the harbor seal that was swimming right next to alex Kidman? what's the difference there's no difference no especially not in the shark's mind definitely not but well, then i guess it seems a little pretentious and a little self-centered of us as humans god you're a great <laughs> guest 
You really are. No, because you've given this some thought. I like this. You're not giving me these generic template answers. You've actually given it some thought, which is, which is great. Oh, this, yeah, and this is off the cuff too. I didn't write any of this <laughs> <laughs> you, you're doing great man um, okay but it's things so that you know that are all part of things that you you know think about and you can just plug in yeah sure, sure. it's great <laughs> <laughs> so okay so i think then to round off just the little jaws as a movie monster because we've got a few questions about your relationship with the movie itself before we before we finish off but yeah. the question is jaws a monster movie and is the shark slash bruce from jaws a monster a, a movie monster so I think you said, I, yes, I, Jules. I think, I, I think not stealing the comments, which were three different disparate type of points of views, but with my kind of original foundational thought of it, maybe I'm going to steal all of those and, and thread those together so we can all kind of weave an answer together of it. Personally, I think Jaws is an, uh, is an adventure um, survival story uh, with a shark that I love the the thing that becomes a monster because he is a character mm -hmm. and when I say survival movie there's four characters that are trying to survive yeah there's Quint, Hooper, Brody and the shark mm -hmm. all they're doing is trying to survive the reason the shark becomes so ornery is because the other ones are trying to kill him you would do the same thing yeah. All it is, it's just a, it's just, a, it's just a matching of of need and survival instincts at that time. The shark's yeah. not going after these guys because he's toying with them and pissed off. He's going. These guys are trying to kill me. Yeah. I've got to remove this thread of this boat with these three, you know, walruses walking around on it. They look like walruses to me. One's got a beard, you know, or must. <laughs> you know, I don't know what these guys are. I don't know what they are. Uh, so there, it's a survival movie of four characters, and more than one of them sort of becomes a monster mm. based on his nature and past experiences. Quint gets real smart and gets very, very tunnel visioned and puts everybody in danger because he's had it and, you know, he cracks and he ends up paying the price. But the shark is also just in, he's trying to survive as well. And he becomes a monster through his character development. And the whole movie as itself, because it's suspenseful, it's dangerous, it's nothing scarier than being out of the open ocean, you know, yeah. even in a nice boat, but, you know, floating around, uh, it, it, it becomes a, it, it's a movie that has elements of horror. Mm. So I think it's an, it's an adventure survival story of four characters that are trying to survive. One main one and maybe one other one becomes a monster at some point through the thing while they're trying to survive. And because of the way the movie unfolds and the story unfolds and the danger and the peril, it has elements of a horror film. Wow. That's it. You've solved it. That's it. Because everyone's yeah. been arguing about this for 50 years nearly, which genre is Jaws. I think that's beautiful. And honestly, I'd never thought about Jaws as a survival movie, but there are four people trying to survive. There's four hadn't, characters hadn't, trying to survive. It, I'm going to have to borrow that. I will quote you on it. You can, that's fine. That. And I honestly, as we were talking about this with the great comments and you and I mentioning others and tying it in, it's not like I've had that in my pocket for 10 years. Like I've just like <laughs> through the conversation, I've realized that look, if you break down storytelling and the movies, like this is a, this is an adventure survival story of four characters. Mm. And I, I'd say one thing as well, which might someone to offer you back in those wonderful words of wisdom was, um, Charlie Sheen came up with an amazing theory. He said the ending of Jaws is the ultimate um, ex, uh, dis demonstration of teamwork. It's Quint's gun, Hooper's tank, and Brody's ability to shoot straight. Beautiful. Well, th well thought out. Charlie Even from Sheen, the mind of Charlie people. Sheen. <laughs> yeah. So, winning. <laughs> Oh, now, if he okay. was winning, he'd be carrying, he'd be wearing shark's blood, not tiger's blood. So, oh, there let's go. not even go there. Oh, Charlie Sheen, <laughs> Charlie Sheen. Um, but tell us about Wolfman's Got Nars. And obviously, this is the documentary you've made about the Monster Squad, or, or more specifically, that the fans. Um, how can people watch it? Where is it? Where is it available? And also, how can they support Wolfman's Got Nars? How can they help get the word out about the documentary? 
Uh, ooh, two great questions, um, and I'll answer in that order. So right now, uh, we are released in the U.S. and Canada on uh, VOD, uh, you know, so on demand. So video on demand for rental and uh, digital download purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, that may or may change in the next couple of months or weeks as they go, you know, to a streaming deal or keep it on VOD. Right now, it's only released U.S. and Canada uh, mm -hmm. through a distributor called uh, Gravitas Ventures. Um, we are also uh, now in the international mix. Uh, so hopefully very soon and by the time or shortly after, I'll keep you updated or you'll see it on the Twitter feed if you follow uh, myself or the squad doc. Uh, mm -hmm. We just signed an international sales agreement a couple months ago with Raven Banner uh, and they're out you know, to the rest of the world, uh, including the UK, which is probably one of our Obviously, besides America, um, we have great Canadian fans, but I think the UK is just as robust with Monster Squad fans uh, as just about anywhere else. They, uh, there's so many, it is amazing. Yeah. And I can't wait for Wolfman's Got Nards to be released on VOD uh, in some way, shape or form or Blu-ray uh, in the UK. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really, hopefully, the first international market that I'm rooting yeah. for. It's not up to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are, you know, there's, there's great fan bases in Germany and in Spain, uh, and in Australia, uh, huge fan base in Australia, uh, even South America and, and Mexico, um, not just places where, uh, you know, Monster Squad, you know, it didn't do well anywhere, but it caught on, you know, it had a worldwide release. And that's, mm -hmm. what's cool is seeing a lot of the Monster Squad international posters. Uh, but we've, we've had some really good response during our film festival time, uh, in places like Germany and the UK was huge and Australia. And right now it's for digital download and rental US and Canada. Hope, hopefully, I mean, it could be any day now that I get, you know, kind of the updates on what markets it's going to be released and what time window that people in the UK or in the rest of Europe or South America or Asia uh, can digitally download or rent Wolfman's Gotten Arts. Um, so stay tuned for that. And the best way to support it right now is to either follow me on Twitter and or Instagram uh, at Andre Gower on Twitter and at Andre Gower official on the Instagram. Uh, and please follow at the squad doc on both of those because that's where, uh, you know, they chime in and give updates and people can correspond, ask questions. Um, and, and, and talk about where they want it so we can forward that to the distributors. Uh, but please, you know, follow both of those. That's where all the information gets, you know, uh, originates coming out from. So you get your update. So please follow us there. Follow me on mine. Stay tuned for these announcements mm -hmm. internationally. I love the way that we can connect, stay friends and reconnect and, and, and show not only our appreciation for the fans, but also the fans' appreciation for each other and for the movie and for us, because uh, we're just fortunate enough to be the, the, the people in the way. And um, that's really what the doc is about, is, is really explaining the relationship of something like a movie with its fan base and how yeah. something like that can connect and impact them for years and years. Uh, this happens to be told through the lens of Monster Squad fans. Yeah. And, and you know what, honestly, it, it, I've seen the documentary twice and I think it's just, it's just brilliant. And I think that the thing that I loved about it the most is that it wasn't the usual behind the scenes making of, it was what this, this film means something to people, you know, in the same way that classics like Jaws and The Sting and all these other great films that we've talked about mean something to people and they carry them with them and they'll pass them on more importantly. So um, if you haven't seen Wolfman's Got Nards, watch it. If you haven't seen The Monster Squad, where have you been? Have you been <laughs> on the moon? Have you been on Mars? Um, watch The Monster Squad, watch Wolfman's Got Nards. Um, obviously you can see Andre is super passionate about it. Um, it's absolutely incredible. You've got to tune in and watch both of those. It's an order. Um, okay, well, Andre, I, I'm all out of questions. You, you've been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's traditional for me to leave sort of the last word with with the guests. So how would you like to, to sign off? Um, you know, I think the best thing, you know, we've talked about, we've lampooned some movies. We've, you know, we, we've we've made fun of some uh, we've said some are better than others, and that's that's all absolutely true, and it's fun. Uh, one thing that we are sort of in this, and when I say we, you know, sort of in you know film 
film and even TV today, you know, film world fans, audiences, fandom, it's gotten into a weird, into a weird world where you can't like something that someone else doesn't really like. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten into this kind of really vitriolic kind of bitter back and forth and a hot take on a Twitter here can blow up a whole Twitter feed or something. And uh, it, there, there's no kind of, you know, critical thought or reasoning kind of conversations anymore when it comes to film. And most of the people that are, that are the most, you know, outspoken and negative sometimes don't know the first thing about the films they're talking about. Um, and so, and that's okay. If you don't know something about an opinion, that's fine. We can all say what we want to just, just don't hurt other people, be nice. And, if you really want to understand why the movies of today do what they do, go back and watch old movies. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's absolutely perfect. Andre, again, thank you so much for taking so much time with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today and stay tuned to dailyjewels.com for more amazing interviews. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can learn about Jaws, Sharks, movie making and everything in between. Also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram and be sure to check out our website, thedailyjaws.com. Until next time, we drink to your legs, farewell and adieu.